Hello everybody, George here for GeoZ Productions, and we start off episode 4, I think it's 4, yeah it's 4. Uh, we start off episode 4 here, by we transfer list uh, Fabian Delph, mainly because I don't enjoy playing with the guy, he's really small and weak, and he just doesn't even seem that good, so I decided to go in for some young, bulky midfielders, and in Zootsie Toko, who has some great physical stats there, I uh, approached to buy him, and Fegor Agud or something, but he's also very good, because he can play centre-back as well, and he has a lot of pace, so... Uh, Toko uh, Grasshopper, I think he plays for. Say they want 1.2 million, which is actually not that much considering we have like 5 million to spend in the 50k wage budget after the sale of Darren Bent. But uh, we'll see here in, in this episode that Gamero scores. He'll score, that's what I'm going to say. But uh, transfer deadline day uh, it says there in the article that we're interested in these players. And uh, they want 2.1 million for a good or. Odude, oh, I don't know how to say that, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you're from his country, or well, you know him. I doubt you do, but whatever. He's 25, but he's an absolute tank, so I'm looking forward to getting him. And uh, Toko, apparently they want 1.4 now, which is kind of stupid. It's only 200k, but I can't be bothered to negotiate, because we we've only got like 9 hours to do this in, so... You see here, we advance through. Uh, Lisandro Lopez and Sessegnon are signed for Arsenal, which is pretty interesting, since they're both pretty good players. I would have gone for Sessegnon, but I don't really have enough money. But both clubs accept our offers, so uh, it's really nice to get these two players because I'm not really interested in using Fabian Delph anymore because he's just so... I mean, he's quick and he's quite you know good on the ball, but he's just so weak, he just gets pushed off so easily, so he's kind of useless in my opinion. And both of these guys are on much smaller wages than him, and uh, they can do a job in, most, in a lot of positions as well, which is really nice to see. And we actually managed to complete these deals relatively early on in transfer deadline day as well, with only like 6 hours remaining, so that's really good. Uh, Taco is on 4k a week, which is like nothing really, considering we have 50k as I just said. And uh, Agood, I'm just going to call him Agood, he has 8k a week, which once again is not that much at all. And we still have a, bit, a little bit of money to spend uh, during January if we re really need to, and I just decided to sort out the team here a bit. So yeah, Agud can actually play centre-back, and he's also relatively quick, he's got like 80 sprint speed, which is really good. Plus he's really bulky and strong, but nothing else happened in the rest of transfer deadline day. It was a really boring deadline day, to be honest, and apparently only 34 million was spent, which is like literally nothing. I can't really see that happening in real life, but um, I decided then to use a little bit of our cash to uh, buy a youth scout, because, you know, it's always nice to get a few youth prospects coming through. I know Aston Villa have a decent youth academy in real life. So we get this guy, Tom Webster, he's from England. So I decided to send him out for three months because I don't want to get flooded with players, you know. I just sent him out for three months to get an attacker from England because I think we're running low on that department, you know. I know we've got Gamero, I know we've got Benteke, but the rest of them aren't that great, really. Vimon's all right, but, you know. Um, Gary Gardner then says he wants more money uh, because he feels he's been training hard and all this stuff, which is probably bullshit, but... You know, whatever, I want to keep him because he looks like a decent young player. And, you know, if he doesn't really work out, I can just sell him on because he's probably going to be worth a lot of money. But, uh, lo and behold, he actually accepts, so that's great, really. It's only not, not, not that much hassle, really. Only like 2k more than he was earning before, so that's alright. But we start the, ep uh, the first game of the episode is against Everton, who are actually a really decent side. But Gamero decides, you know what, I'm going to score an epic first goal. And he runs through. Good save, and uh, I don't really know what happens here. And instead of scoring an epic goal, he scores an extremely scrappy goal. But you know what? A goal is a goal. I'm really excited for Gamero because he's he seems really way better than Darren Bent on the ball. That's all I'm going to say. But Everton came back, and of all players, Phil Neville on the wing crosses it in, and Fellaini was just a monster in the air. You're not going to beat him. He scores a great header. The Belgian Afro man. Although well, that could be Witzel, but Fellaini's better. I said it. Anyway, <laughs> we managed to win the ball back here with a good. A good. Anyway, yeah, but look at this pass from uh, Udaboos. He has a great pass over and Gamera with a great first touch, great strength. He's got the pace, has he got the finish? You bet your freaking life he does. What an absolute beast of a finish from Kevin Gamera. If he can do that regularly all season without getting injured, you know, we could definitely finish mid table, maybe even higher. But, you know, we've got to keep our feet on the ground. But, uh, Adebayo, um, what was I talking about? Adbon Lahore plays it into Toko. A beautiful turn on his debut, and a nice finish into the corner in the 83rd minute. And we actually end up winning that game 3 1, which is really good, especially against a decent Everton team. With players like, you know, Morales and Fellaini. But, 
you know, we've got to move on, we keep moving forward, and we come up against Swansea here. Benteke plays a nice one-two here with Old Brighton, who are excited to play in this game. And uh, Benteke just skips past Williams like he wasn't there, and the sumptuous finish into the far corner. It's just, it's just really nice to have two great strikers, you know. Benteke is a big tank, he's also quite quick, and he's got a nice finish, as you just saw there. But some disgusting defending by me, I don't know what I was doing. Diving in all over the place, removing the wrong players everywhere, and De Guzman punishes me with a beautiful finesse shot from right outside the area. And uh, Swansea peg us back immediately with a nice goal there from De Guzman. He actually looks like a really good player in real life and on the game, to be honest. And it was only until late on in the second half, really, that there was another decent chance that came along. But this one here came to De Guzman again with a decent long shot, but uh, Guz Guzan, I think my goalkeeper is, yeah, he made a good save, but we just couldn't get it clear. Uh, Bannon tried to, I think, but uh, it came here to Michu, played a nice one too, uh, Danny Graham. A great finish from Michu, actually, there, which gave Swansea uh, surely a win in the 83rd minute. There wasn't really that much time to get back, and uh, in fact, there wasn't, so we lost that game 2 1. You know, it was always going to come, especially against a decent Swansea team, so I'm not too surprised. I mean, we're not going to win the league this season at all, but we uh, move on into the Capital One Cup, second round against Watford, and absolutely nothing happened. This was the most boring game I've ever played in FIFA, so in the extra time first half, we managed to scrape a really scrappy goal here with James McLean in the 97th minute. Uh, Gamero's shot was well saved, but it came to McLean, and you couldn't really miss there, but an awful goal here from Segres, I think that's my backup keeper's name. Uh, it led to Watford having a decent chance here and some more diabolical defending. What am I even doing? What is Baker doing? I don't really think it's his fault. It's mainly mine, but Troy Deeney equalises in the 117th minute. I know you're all thinking, oh, God damn it, penalties. But would you believe it? We actually managed to go on and get a winner. Three goals in extra time. You don't often see that, but Vyman here uh, coming through and... Uh, what can I say, really, that was a really, really bad, scrappy goal. But Zogbia gets there in front of the defender and the goalkeeper to give us the winner. And we're going through into the next round of the Capital One Cup. But guys, that's the end of the episode. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you for episode five very soon. Goodbye.